heat check time. That's funny. I'm sitting there watching the Knicks last night, and obviously I'm an independent basketball observer. I'm just watching good, hard basketball, having a good old time. And as I'm watching one certain thing happen on the garden floor, my brain popped to one human being and one human being only. As I saw Alec Burks performing, recovering from being in the mothballs that Tom Thibodeau placed him in, I thought of his biggest fan. I thought of a guy that has supported Alec Burks through thick and thin. A man who said, please trade for Alec Burks. We need Alec Burks. And then when they traded for Alec Burks, he was the happiest man in America. And I can only imagine what was going on last night at, I don't think he was at Madison Square Garden. I think he was at a watch party. But I can only imagine what was going on in this man's mind. So ladies and gentlemen, he is not only the president of the Alec Burks fan club and his biggest <laughs> supporter, and really the only person in it until last night, he's also the host of Nick Fan TV, CP the Franchise. CP, I'm so happy for you and your guy Alec Burks. Congratulations. Yes, yes. Well, well, this is the, the CP the Franchise self-created weekly spot. Uh, presented by Town Fair Tires. So, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Barber, it's great to be back on with you guys. Likewise, Pleasure to EP. be back on. Um, I, were you a little nervous about your your uh, request for Alec Burks for the last, I don't know, two weeks? And all of a sudden, now you shouldn't be. You know what? I really was. And listen, the fans were killing me because, you know, the fans, they want to play the right and wrong game. In this business, we provide opinions. That's right. The fans always want to put your feet to the fire on the right and wrong thing. And look, I stand by my takes because what I told the fans and what I told my co-hosts when they piled up on me was you just never know in the playoffs when somebody's number is going to get called. And regular season performance is not an indicator of what you're going to do in the playoffs, positive or negative. You have to see how the games play out and how the series play out. And so Tom Thibodeau was left with no choice. Back was against the wall. Had to put Burks in there. And he's playing completely different than what he did in the regular season. 17 points per game. 50% 50% from the field, 50 from three. He's been great. You know, when I got nervous was in game two when Jalen was out in the second quarter and Burks got his first burn, if you will, that final possession of the first half mm. when he basically <laughs> was like, I'm mellow. I'm going to mellow <laughs> yeah. this thing. And I thought, oh, God, we've seen the last of Alec Burks. But to his credit, and he deserves it, and so does Tom Thibodeau, he has kind of erased that little moment and has obviously made the impact we've seen over the last few games. He's the freshest legs that they have. I know, so, right? you know, I, that's the that's the irony of the whole thing. He's the freshest legs that they have. Uh, playing efficient basketball. They haven't played off ball for the most part. He's making the right reads. He's getting to the free throw line, which the Knicks have, haven't really been able to do consistently. He's knocking down his free throws. So it's been a good revelation over these past three games. And by the way, the thing you just said is really why it works. Because he is off ball. He's not trying to create. Right? He's not... I'm off the dribble. I'm pulling up step back three pointers. He's not doing any of that stuff. He's standing over in the corner. Jalen Brunson, the dribble, kick, whatever it is, he's always getting open shots. Even though his last one, it was a good pump fake. He got I forgot who he got up in the air and out of the way. But that those uh, set, catch, and shoot, he does well. It's the other things that you had to worry about. Yeah, I think when he first got here, it was maybe there was a little bit more pressure to really take over as a point guard of that second unit, and Mm -hmm. it was nothing but a disaster. But now he's locked in, man. I think he's learned from, uh, you know, those dog days in that second half of the season where he ultimately found the bench, and he came back in, he switched it up, and he's back to being who they need him to be. So it's been a great sign. When I looked into your eyes a few days ago, and I looked into your eyes because I watch you. I'm watching you, even though if it's on YouTube, I'm looking into your eyes. I saw panic. And I saw that you were no. scared. No, I did. You no. don't have to admit it. No. CP, no. CP. <laughs> you were scared. But now, after what we went, because I'm going to say the quiet part out loud, all right? Yeah. And I'm saying this as an IBO, as an independent basketball observer, I'm not trying to jinx you. That team can't beat you at Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. I know no. it. You know it. And you know what? They know it, bro. No. No, no, they can't. And after the Mother's Day massacre, you know, I was concerned. Was I panicking? No. I, I went into last night's game thinking if the Knicks play their A game, two things, get on the boards and get Brunson going. They out-rebounded the Pacers 53-29. to mm. You had a 44-point game by Jalen Brunson. That's it. Because off of the live rebounds, good things happen. They get the second chance opportunities. I think they won like 29-6 to or something like that. You get Josh Hart going off of the rebounds. And so everything flows off of their ability to control the glass. And that's what they did. 
And that's their identity. I think mm-hmm. back to how they whipped Cleveland's ass last year. It's those second and third chance opportunities that yep. they gave them. And they took 30 more shots than Indiana. But what I loved was the adjustment Thibs made by starting Deuce McBride. I thought that. Yep. And we got a preview of it a few days ago in that second half when he made that adjustment. But they went small. They still kicked their butts on the offensive glass. And I thought Deuce sitting that corner three early set up by Jalen was almost like the, ah, maybe his confidence is coming back. Yeah, McBride's, McBride has been great these last two games. You know, started out the gates a little bit slow. McConnell was giving him the business, and, and so he wasn't really that great. But to be able to slow down Tyrese Halliburton in the onset when the game yep. first starts, I thought that was major. Tyrese Halliburton shooting 30% against McBride, 52% against the rest of the Knicks, zero assists when McBride is guarding him. I think that's critical, and that's going to be a major key in game six. Slow Tyrese Halliburton down. You know you're going to get their best shot. And so McBride has been great there. And then to be able to play off ball, off of Brunson, get his three-pointers to to go down, and then also be aggressive in attacking the rim, great job by McBride yesterday. CP, uh, Evan made everybody, or the few that actually did, who criticized Tom Thibodeau apologize. Were you one of those? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was your criticism? I was going after these people on the uh, after the Mother's Day massacre, and then I did a show yesterday. All these people blaming Tibbs. It's his fault. No, no, I'm the asking, did you? Out. I'm talking about, did you? No. Were you a blamer of Tibbs? No, absolutely not. Hmm. There, there's, there's no way you can blame Tibbs for this, Tiki. They have four, That's what I said, and I don't remember people four, complaining about it. No, no, yeah. but, but, but CP talks to Nick fans every day. Yes. Right? Every, yes. How, yeah. how many every of them, day, long before they were okay, how in many, this playoff. How, how he many, knows that they've how, been bitching. How many of them have been bitching, percentage-wise? 20, 30, 50, 60? When they, when they lose is when you hear it the most, right? Mm-hmm. The coach always gets the blame when they lose. You know that, Tiki, yeah, right? Yeah, of so, course. So that's but they, that's were, they, they were finished second in the East, dude. Right, <laughs> like, right. They played through right. a ton of injuries. How can you criticize Tom Thibodeau during the it, season? It's, un, it's unreal. You know, every every player's injury, it's all his fault. He left Randall in with too late, and, and OG Adenobi is overuse. Listen, these things happen in the game. Mm-hmm. He's going with the guys he has no choice but to go with. You're not going to go to to Jake Daquan Jeffries and all these other guys <laughs> on two way contracts. Right. Like, let's be real here. So he's doing. He's, he's dealing with the, the cards that he's dealt with. He's done a tremendous job, best job that he's done since he's been here. Three out of four years there in the playoffs, and as the reports have come out today, he's nearing a, a deal at ten million per year to resign with the Knicks. And that I expected it. I yeah. expect the contract extension to come, and it's well deserved for Tom Thibodeau. By the way, stop using Daquan Jeffries. Please use uh, Mamadi Diakite. He's right, a UGA right. grad. I need to represent my Wahoos <laughs> as best I can. There's not many of them doing much in the NBA right Unbelievable. now. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, give me your. Do you think they close them out Friday? Honestly, I think they can. I think they can. Same game plan. Give me a Brunson big game. Get on the board. Slow down the high octane pace or pace. And make sure that they don't jump out the gates on fire, right? right. And, and that Deuce McBride matchup is going to be key. Artenstein, man, 12 offensive mm. rebounds in, in that game. I think, yeah, he might have more than that. I think 17 rebounds, 12 on the offensive yep, side. That's right. And this is a guy who was talking about he had a pinched nerve in his shoulder <laughs> at the end of game Dude, four. Dude, he did an x-ray. <laughs> right. So, so, so talk about the toughness and resiliency. But based on what we saw and how they closed out Philadelphia in game six, these guys are built for it, man. Physically, mentally, emotionally, I, I think they can get the job done I got on, it. on Friday. I, I, I lean towards agreeing with you. I think they're going to close yeah. them out. I don't think there will yeah. be a Game yeah. 7 you at the Garden. You asked me yesterday if there would be a Game yeah. 7. I said no. No. I think you may yeah. be right. Well, we shall and, see. And then it's off to Boston, yeah. right, CP? Let's go! It's it's off to Boston. But in the meantime, i got to take care of business. You know, all, all these frauds talking bad about the Knicks. Roberts, you're one of them. But i got Loogie there. Oh, Listen by Carrie Sleeve through <laughs> Loogie to set you straight because you've been a fraud about this team. we got Draymond Green coming on the show tomorrow, oh, 3 o'clock. Dude, really? Yeah, i got to set him straight, man. Oh, I'm nice. not selling into retirement. Draymond Green is next. I'm hey, going to set him straight. And let me tell you, CP, I understand you may think I hate – well, I do hate the Knicks. That's, that's, that's oh, obviously true. Of course I do. Yeah. But I try to be fair. And I thought what Dave, Draymond saying was ridiculous. Thinking yeah. they were a fluke. First of all, I don't think he understands what a fluke is. They were in the second round last year. So they've already proven yeah. that, hey, they are a legitimate playoff threat in back-to-back seasons. The idea of a fluke is a team that's there once and then they disappear. He used Atlanta. Sure. Atlanta's not the Knicks. So even though I root for your, not you personally, of course, but your demise, I root for your team's demise, I think that's 
some of the criticisms that have come nationally have been ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And I do think, and this is where I can bond with you, bro, I think it's a New York thing with the Jets, with the Knicks, and the Mets specifically. They are teams that the national media likes to laugh at. And the Knicks are no longer a team you can laugh at. The Mets are still working on it. The Jets are still working on it. The Knicks are no longer a laughable team. And that's why, even though, yeah, I don't like your team, I understand the unfair criticism because I feel like I get it from those other teams I just mentioned. Hmm. The, the LOL Knicks thing just does not work anymore. You you can't go to that well. They are built to last. They have an identity under Tibbs, defense, rebounding, physicality, and they have a clutch, bona fide closer who has ice in his veins. He has killer instinct. Another 40-point game. The mm. only other people to do it, LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Right. Jalen Brunson has been off the charts. They have it all. They just need one more, one more piece. We'll figure that out in the offseason when it comes. <laughs> hey, but this team is built to last. So, so CP, you're going after Draymond. You're going to yeah. put him on blast. NickFansTV.com. That's how you get it. He's got one question. YouTube. 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 Uh, YouTube. YouTube on yeah. YouTube. When, when are you getting an app, bro? <laughs> when are you getting an app? Well, it, I, it, it's, it's all part of the process. You know, I mean, I, I want an app. I just, coming, TV. I just want the, the app to sit on my pa- iPad, my iPhone. I don't yeah. have to do nothing but just click on the app. It, it's all part of the program. We are we are working <laughs> towards it. The Fantasy Sports Network is coming, but I got a bigger question for you. What's up? The bigger question is: Are you coming to the number one watch party for the fans by the fans on Friday night? Slate in New York City has been buzzing. We Slate. have New York City back to like 2010. Slate. Yeah, that's up your alley, T. Dude, Slate is where yeah. I used to do my Thuzio events. That there place you go. is dope. See? Go yeah, hang out. They got, and, and they, listen, got the, they got they got the VIP downstairs and the I mean, that, that place is dope. I, VIP is your alley. I got a table right for you, bro. <laughs> You'll right be right in my table. You won't have to mingle with the people. Don't no, worry about I like, it. I like We're, mingling with the people, man. That's what, that's my deal. Well, then you got to pull up. You got to pull up. I'm saving a spot for you. Uh, your name is at the door, Roberts. You can't come. <laughs> Kiki, Kiki and Loogie, I need you guys there Friday well, night. He's on vacation, charge, man. If I can convince my wife to let me go in the city on a Friday night, I'll be there. Get it Let's done. Do it. Get it done. Let's C- do it, CP, man. appreciate it, man. Keep up the good work. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, fellas. We'll talk. There you go. CP, the franchise. The Knicks, one win away. One win away from the Eastern Conference Finals. 